Hello everyone, this is Jeannie, also known as Scrapbooking Mama. I had posted on Facebook page called uh, Lighthouse Stop and Shop a picture of a fabric flower that I had done. I had bought lace from that, that shop there and uh, I just wanted to show uh, the ladies of that group and, and gentlemen of that group the flower that I did. And uh, then I had some people who asked if there was a tutorial on it and uh, or if I would make one on it. And I hadn't planned on doing that, but I thought, well, I'll, I'll give it a shot. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial of anything. But this is the flower that I did. And the one I'm doing tonight is going to be a little different because I don't have this material. I don't have enough material to make one. And uh, also, it's probably going to be a little bit smaller, too. I had used a two-inch, I got glue there, a two-inch circle on here. And uh, that's why my flower came out so big. I didn't intend for it to come out that big, but it did. And, but you can use it for a lot of different projects. You, can, you know, a person could put fabric on the bottom up here and, and a clip and use it for a hair bow or, or put it on a headband even. But... I usually use these for my scrapbooking mixed medias and pages, scrapbook pages. So, <clears throat> excuse my voice because I've had uh, allergies. So what you're going to need to use or get is uh, two different colors of lace. And my first one here is uh, the one that bottom layer I'm going to try to use. It says I've never used this one before and I don't think I've ever really used one quite this small. But we're, what you're going to do is put this as your bottom layer and you're going to use hot glue. Or if you wanted to, you could put a gathered basting stitch in here and gather, gather that way and then glue it down. Whichever way is easier for you. And you're also going to need a second layer of lace. I'm going to try this one. I know it's a little bit different color, but that's okay because I like contrast. I may not use it, so I may, you may see me step away from it to get a different lace. I've got plenty of lace, and Miss, Miss Cindy of the boutique there, of the um, shop there, she does have a wonderful selection of laces. So keep an eye out for her. You'll get some great deals. They're only a dollar a yard. You can't beat that. So anyway, I'm going to get my, this is a one and a half inch circle here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on it. First, I'm going to, uh, well, let me not jump ahead of myself here. I'm going to put a little glue on this end here, if I can get going. And I'm going to fold it over so it doesn't have a rough edge there. And that's the tricky part is putting it down without the silicone helpers, which I have. But they're hard for me to work with when I'm trying to do something like this, especially. So you, you're going to take a little bit of glue, spot it down to your piece of paper. Just a little bit. And then you're going to begin folding your ruffles to be, your ruffles to be will be ruffles. You're going to take a little spot of glue, not all the way over, just a little bit there, and you're going to put fold a fold piece there. Okay. And then you're going to do that same thing again. You kind of eyeball how you want it. And I'm going to do that. So I'm going to put a little spot here. And I'm going to give it another little fold. I hope I'm not out of the camera range when I did that. But let's see where I want it. I'm going to do it like this. Okay. So it's just an eyeballing thing for me. When you do it this way with the hot glue, it's just eyeballing where you want that to be. How big of a fold, everything. But you want to make sure you get good folds in there. Otherwise, it's not going to lay flat. You're going to have this. It's going to bend down or up. And it's not going to lie flat. So do make sure that you put enough in there. Enough folds. So
very close to the end now. I'm going to do one more big one there. Okay, now I think I may have to go ahead and do another one because I see that I'm at the end, but I don't want it to look funny to have a gap there, so I'm going to go ahead and do another one there. Whoops, didn't get a hold of that right. Okay, now, now we need to cut it, and I use my Tim Holtz scissors for that. I mean, these are great scissors for cutting material, so kind of cut it as straight as possible. When it's in a ruffle like that, it's kind of hard to cut straight, but, you know, as straight as possible. Now. I don't want to leave this edge like that, and I've got plenty of material down there, so what I'm going to do is fold the material so I'll have a rounded edge there. Now this is going to be tricky for me because the hot glue is hard to handle for me sometimes, so when it comes to these kind of projects. Okay. And then you can take and glue down that top piece to the bottom piece. And it just makes it look like another ruffle in there. So there you have it. And don't worry about these pieces in here. If you want to try to wipe them off, you can. You don't want to tear your paper though, so but they're not going to be in the way of anything. So there you have your bottom layer. Okay, now for the next layer, and on that fabric, the big fabric flower that I had posted on her page, I had um, done loops in it. I may not do loops this time. I don't know yet. I'm checking to see, and this is kind of a creamy color. And it doesn't show well, real well in there because it goes too closely with that. So I may use, let's see what this one looks like. Kind of a creamy yellow color. No, see what you have to do, you kind of get an idea of what you want to do and then a lot of times you change your mind on what color you, you're wanting to do. And I think this would be too wide for it to be used here. Now, a lot of times what I do, instead of doing the loops like this, I'll go ahead and take and make a second layer of this on there and go through it again. And then just put another button on it. But I don't think I will do that. So let's see. Let me see if this blue one will work again. Um, I'm too short. I was going to see if I had a scrap piece. So I don't. We'll make it a little smaller. Okay, I want to take one. And this is kind of some scrap fabric I have here. And just see. That would mean, of course, since I only have this much left, I would have to do a third layer of different color. And while it looks good, I don't really think that it's going to work for me. So. Okay, now I like the way she folds it. I'm, I mean, it's like she puts 
packages now you know and they look so evenly folded how she does it and i'm like i can never get them back in that way let's see if one of these will work a light pink in here and a darker pink there and this i think might be too skinny well it might not be i would probably have to put more in there You know what? I think I like that. So I'm going to try that after I pull these out. Okay. So now I need to measure how big I want this to be. And yeah, that is so pretty there. That is gorgeous. So I'm going to have to put it, make sure it's upside down though. So when I fold it over, it's going to be the right side up showing. So rather than cut it that length, I'm going to cut it just a tiny bit longer. Because knowing me, I didn't measure that right. And it will be too small. So I'm going to cut that piece. And yeah, it is a little too long, but that's good though. I mean, it's better too long than too short because that's harder to fix. So I'm going to cut one section off there and see if that's better. And yes, that's better. So I need to cut eight of these pieces. And I'll speed dial through that. <laughs> Okay, so what I want to do, and this is kind of tricky for me because this, you know, I haven't done it very much like this. This is kind of new to me yet, too. And if, again, if my hot glue gun will work. Not sure what the deal is with it. not that old that's probably way too much okay so here in the middle of the circle and see if you don't have stringy glues you won't have to worry about pulling it away but it never fails. It does that for me. And it kind of centered on top of the other piece there too. Okay. I want to put some more in there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be fast forwarding you again. and start going down the sections. So I only want it to go so far. 
going to do crisscross, but I did not do that, did I? As long as you make sure you get it on there good. The spot that you want it and as evenly as possible. Yeah, that's looking. I get all tangled up in hot glue. Drives me nuts. Mm, that's a short drive. I see some people work with it like there's nothing to it, and I'm like, well. Okay, and there you have your second layer, all ready to pour the third layer. Now, I may use something totally different on that for the third layer. I'm not sure yet. I'm trying to get the strings from me. I don't know if a different, totally different color would look good or not, but I'm going to kind of see what this would look like if I loop it. I'll have to cut that piece off it. I love this. And while it would look pretty, it's probably, I don't know if it would really look right to have a cream on top with a pink and a white there. So I love that. And I could have bought a white one like that, and I didn't because I go with creams a lot, but here I am. <laughs> okay, let me find a white piece now, which I thought I had that all ready to go, but that's not going to work. some more of these pieces here. Oops, hold on. Two and a half inches. Approximately. So I'm going to do it on the next line and I'm going to cut six of them for now. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And I may need more. And like I said, this is different material than what the crochet material is, but it's the same technique as what I used in that. So if you you know when you find the crochet material. Make sure it's right side up before I do that. Yep. When you find a crochet material, grab it. Because it does look much much nicer as if you want the uh, 
vintage look. And this one here will be more as a uh, shabby chic. But you could, you know, I love shabby chic, so I'm okay with that. Make sure you get it right. Just take it and glue on the end and fold it over. I normally wouldn't make it probably this big of a loop. But I'm trying to, you know, because it's so skinny, I'm having to adjust. So that was, that's something you need to, you know, bear in mind. If you want that third layer and you want the two second and third layer to be the same color, you're going to have to make sure that this is wide enough. And so mine's not quite as wide as it, as I should have done. But that's okay because, you know, each flower is different in nature anyway. So there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so I was rolling along and thought I was doing pretty good on time, but apparently I wasn't. Uh, the last you had seen was that I was putting the final third layer loops on. Uh, it would be like the loops, oops, glue on my finger still, loops up here, which were reversed of these. And uh, so you didn't see me put the final uh, top on. And I was so pleased to show it to you. And then I looked over and there was this menu saying that I had run out of time. I exceeded my time limit, which is unusual for me to do. But anyway, uh, you got the gist of the idea of it. And uh, uh, you, you saw me do the bottom layer. You saw me do the second layer with the, the loops on the, the folds on the end. And then you saw me put these loops in and this these loops here just depends on how full you want it and uh, if you want pretty full then you're going to have to add more loops but it you know for me they weren't an e even number this was seven loops and so instead of showing this this to you how to do i just used different material uh, because i didn't have enough of this anymore and this probably is one of my favorites right here i when i saw it i thought well that's okay but then I, you know, worked with it and made this, and I thought, wow, I wish I'd got more. And anyway, so this is more of a vintage look to it to me. It may not be to anybody else, but it gives me more of a vintage look to it, vintage shabby chic kind of thing. Whereas this is totally, to me, a shabby chic. And this is the final product. What I did, I had a crocheted flower that someone had given to me and they had put a, a jewel in it and they had given that to me and I thought that would look really pretty in it and it, it's perfect so here you have the bottom layer with the lace on it that we glue together then we have all the loops which we can adjust those however you want we can take a wide brush in if I can find it, I know I have one. You can take it and kind of make sure that they open up a little bit. You may have to work with it for a few times. But, you know, when you work with it, they will. And you can see that that one there is opened up really good. But anyway, those loops there, if you want them to open up more, just do something like that and work with it, though. And then this next layer were uh, the loops were 
No, I just realized that I put that one backwards. Oh, no, I didn't. That's on that. Okay. So anyway, you got these loops here, which they do kind of turn a little bit sideways here and there, but that's okay. You know, so you've got your shabby chic flower here. So I hope you enjoy it. And um, I'm not the best tutorial teacher. I can do something one-on-one -on -one by myself and do pretty good. And, uh, but when I do it, or even one-on-one -on -one to another person, not just to me, but uh, when I work with it my, on a tutorial, it seems like I want it so badly to be good that everybody can understand it that I, I mess up, you know. So you could even take just this and put a big flower on it like that. This came from uh, Scrapbooking With Me Boutique, which is the Lighthouse Shop, Stop and Shop is the uh, sister group to uh, Scrapbooking With Me Boutique. So anyway, there that is, and if you have any questions, just give me a private message, and uh, we'll talk about it. Thanks. Have a great day.